Good morning, everybody. This is your favorite um, aspiring revolutionary here, a wandering author, reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. <clears throat> Today we are at Red Mountain Park, the site of a former iron ore mining operation in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, it's got a pretty nice looking trail system. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to continue our discussion on tales of pride, power, and decadence by picking up where we last left off. So Gaius Marius, the young novus homo, the man who had just entered the upper classes of Roman society, was quickly elevated to near godhood after saving the Roman people from the Kimbric migration. In fact, Plutarch reports that following this heroic effort, the Roman people would bless their food by chanting to the gods in Marius. So, as you can see, he had taken on near heroic proportions in the Romans' mind. He had saved them from a, a threat that seemed almost impossible to save them from. And for around nine years after this, uh, things were relatively simple. However, a slave rebellion, the Servile War, and then the Social War, whenever the other Latin people in Italy tried to get their political rights restored, in order to kind of counterbalance some of the growing inequality that they were experiencing, gave Marius the impetus to actually institute the first major civil war and the first serious dictatorship of the late Republic. So what kind of lessons did this, does this hold for us? Well, the Romans, much like our own time, were experiencing bubbling social tensions just beneath the surface. and. The upper classes were finally beginning to see this, but instead of actually instituting any changes that changed the underlying conditions for the average Romans, they began to exploit these by telling the average Roman people that they were there for them, but instead they were really there for their own personal power. So following Gaius Marius's seizure of power in Rome, Sola, which is another famous Roman who had fought under Gaius Marius, actually marches his legions on the city of Rome. And the ancient historian Appian reports that whenever Roman envoys sent from the city asked him why he was marching his troops on the city, he simply replied to deliver her from tyrants. It's kind of funny, right? <laughs> um, a tyrant delivering the city from tyrants. Anyways, once he got in there and deposed Saturninus, and Marius, he instituted one of the first recorded reign of terrors that we've ever seen, similar to the reign of terror that happens in the French Revolution after uh, the revolution breaks out over there. Anyways, during Sola's proscriptions, he sends out daily decrees in the forum, listing off people that he wants to have killed. Now, believe it or not, after he killed a little over a thousand folks, mainly powerful people, and uh, stripped the Tribune of the Plebs of its powers, and made some changes to the Roman constitution that mostly favored the oligarchic elite, uh, he, he stepped away from power. So Sola is actually a pretty interesting historical character. Anyways, his changes De disempowered the average Roman people, even though they were really hoping he would step in and save them. And it sets the stage for Pompey the Great, Pompey Magnus, and Caesar's ultimate uh, destruction of the Republic and democracy within the Roman Empire. Anyways, this is a wandering author here reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. We will continue our discussion of tales, power, pride, and decadence, as well as the demoralized mind dissected. And I think I may add a third working series in the for the upcoming month, kind of discussing Aristotle's view on the soul, de anima. So this is this, uh, the Koine Greek, I think that's how you pronounce it. It was the same language that was used by the uh, New Testament scholars who, who wrote the, the hands that actually wrote the original Bible, which was mostly composed during 
the Roman Republic and Roman Empire's era. So the reason I'm doing that is uh, I believe that cultivating some some knowledge on the human spirit is essential in this psycho-spiritual war that we are fighting with our own culture. Anyways, what are you guys doing to inspire and uplift your communities today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part. As always, you guys have a good day. I'll see you somewhere else.